Hi, in this video of the ADLM 2000 series, we'll discuss the module's trigger features. A trigger is an event which causes something to start. In this case, we will be using triggers to start signal acquisition. We'll go over the internal trigger options provided by the oscilloscope and the logic analyzer instrument, as well as the external trigger alternatives. The module offers the following trigger features. Internal triggers for the oscilloscope and the logic analyzer, a trigger in pin where you can connect an external trigger signal, which can determine the beginning of signal acquisition for both the instruments mentioned earlier, and the trigger out pin on which you can forward any of the trigger signals ensured by the module to another device. Like the other digital pins of the M2K, the trigger in and trigger out pins have 3.3 volts CMOS logic levels. They are also 1.8 volt compatible and 5 volt tolerant. And of course, the sample rate is 100 mega samples per second. Connect the module to the computer using the USB connector in the middle, open Scopy and click Connect. Open the pattern generator and enable digital IO1. Set a clock pattern with the following parameters. Frequency 200 kHz, phase 0 degrees, to recycle 50%. Run the pattern generator. Open the logic analyzer and enable pins digital IO0 and digital IO1. Set the trigger condition on the digital IO0 pin to rising edge. If you run the instrument, you'll notice that the signal we generated on digital IO1 is now plotted even though we set the trigger condition on the other enabled digital pin. This is happening because, by default, the trigger mode is set to auto. Open the trigger menu and change the mode to normal. Run the instrument again. Notice that no signal is displayed yet. This is because the instrument is now waiting for the trigger condition we set to be satisfied. Now, in the digital I.O. instrument, set digital I.O. zero's state to zero and configure it as output. Click Run and set digital I.O. zero to one. This will trigger the logic analyzer and now the signal we generated on digital I.O. one can be observed on the plot. In the trigger settings menu, we can also set the trigger logic. The two options, AND or OR, refer to the logic between the external trigger and the internal trigger conditions set on the digital pins. Intuitively, if this option is set to OR, then only one of the trigger conditions needs to be satisfied. On the other hand, when set to AND, the instrument would be triggered only if both the external and the internal trigger conditions were fulfilled. Set the logic to end. In the external trigger tab, we'll enable the external trigger by toggling the on-off switch. When selecting a source, you may choose between the following options, external trigger in and the oscilloscope. If the oscilloscope was set as source, then the trigger condition of the source would be mirrored to this instrument as well. Hence, the condition dropdown is disabled. When choosing the external trigger in option, you may configure the trigger condition as you would for any other digital pin. Set the source to external trigger in and the condition to high. Connect the TI pin to digital IO2. In the digital IO instrument, configure set pin as output and run the instrument. Now set digital IO2 to 1. Notice that the logic analyzer has not been triggered yet. This suggests that when the trigger logic is set to end, the instrument is waiting for both conditions to be fulfilled. If you start toggling the, the digital IO0 pin so to obtain a rising edge, you'll notice that the data capture on the logic analyzer was triggered. With the pattern generator still running, connect digital IO1 to the OnePlus pin of the module. Open the oscilloscope and set the time base to 2 microseconds, the vertical range to 1 volt per division, and run the instrument. This instrument also provides the option of auto-triggering. This means that the trigger self-adjusts so that the instrument is able to capture data. Since the trigger mode is set to auto, we'll be able to see our clock pattern. Access the trigger menu using the Namely button in the bottom right corner. Set the mode to normal. Like the logic analyzer, the oscilloscope is also provided with an internal trigger feature. 
Let's enable the internal trigger, set the source to channel 2 and the condition to rising edge. To set the trigger level, you have two options. You can change the value from the level control or by dragging its corresponding slider across the plot. Set the trigger level to 2 volts. Hysteresis is also provided to improve triggering performance on noisy trigger signals. The hysteresis value is then set for the channel used as a trigger source. If we click the single button, the instrument will lock in the waiting state until it receives its trigger. Connect digital I.O. 0 to channel 2. Open the digital I.O. instrument, set digital I.O. 0 as output and its state to 0. Run the instrument and set the state to 1. In the oscilloscope plot, you should notice that the data capture was triggered at the rising edge on channel 2. Disable the internal trigger and turn on the digital one. Here, we can set the source to either the external trigger in or the logic analyzer. When we were discussing the logic analyzer trigger options, an example using the external trigger in was shown. Since the procedure is the same for the oscilloscope, now we'll demonstrate how to do cross-instrument triggering. That is, to trigger data capture for the oscilloscope when the logic analyzer's condition is fulfilled, and vice versa. Set the source to logic analyzer. Naturally, the condition drop-down becomes inactive. Click the single button and the instrument locks again. Open the logic analyzer, enable digital I.O. 0 and set its trigger condition to rising edge. Disable the external trigger and then click the single button. Now both instruments are waiting for their conditions to be fulfilled. In the digital I.O. instrument, set the state of digital I.O. 0 to 0 and then back to 1. The rising edge triggered both instruments and if we look at our oscilloscope plot, we'll notice both the clock pattern generated on digital I.O. 1 and monitored on channel 1 and the trigger signal generated on digital I.O. 0 and monitored on channel 2. The final trigger option available in this menu is the external trigger out. If enabled, this option forwards the selected trigger signal on the TO pin. This feature comes in handy when you have a network of different instruments and you want them to be triggered at the same time. You may choose between all three available trigger options to be forwarded. External trigger in, oscilloscope and logic analyzer. Using the TO pin, you can synchronize multiple M2Ks in order to obtain more oscilloscope or logic analyzer channels. The TO pin can also be used to trigger other instruments like your favorite oscilloscope. On the other hand, you can use the TI pin to trigger an ADLM2000 module with an external signal. We'll demonstrate the principle of operation by forwarding the oscilloscope trigger on the TO pin, which will connect to the TI pin. Then, we'll set the logic analyzer to be triggered on the external trigger in. Connect the TI and TO pins. In the oscilloscope, set the external trigger back on and leave the conditions as we previously set them. Disable the digital trigger. Then enable the external trigger out and set the option to oscilloscope. Click the single button. Now go to the logic analyzer and enable digital I.O. 1. In the trigger menu, enable the external trigger and set the condition to rising edge. Then click the single button. In the digital I.O. instrument, toggle the state of digital I.O. 0 and observe both instruments being triggered. If we look at the plots, we can see that the same trigger signal is recorded by both instruments. This concludes our presentation of the MQK's trigger options. The last two videos of this series will handle Scopy's more advanced features and an introduction to LibM2K, our full feature software API, which allows you to write your own custom programs for the module. For more resources and information on the ADLM2000 module and Scopy, please visit wiki.analog.com. If you have questions that these videos do not provide an answer to, please feel free to ask us on the Engineer Zone forum in the Virtual Classroom section. You'll find links to all kinds of helpful pages in the video description. Thanks for watching.